I need to talk really fast to make up for it, right? <laughs> so uh, I, again, uh, I think everybody heard and uh, there probably wasn't too much important slide content, except now it's still not advancing. There we go. All right, so, you know, as, as one progresses through the scientific uh, practice, you know, there's kind of a progression of ideas where you have to, first of all, expect it, and then you have to believe it's true to motivate you to do something. And then hopefully you will know whether or not your expected idea works or not. And, you know, uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, if you look at the dictionary de definition of expectation, it's eager anticipation. And, uh, you know, when I think about Bob and, and some of the statements and the way he acted, he was always an avid learner, listener. He sought how he could apply what he had learned to important problems. And I think that that was a, a great skill of his. Um, and of course, expectation is driven by knowledge that suggests the possibility of discovery and it drives the efforts to do that discovery. You know, if you don't have that fire in your belly, um, you're probably not going to be a successful scientist. And if you think about how Bob's life was, you know, uh, this is a great quote from Mark. Uh, two words immediately come to mind. Bob was exceptionally insightful and courageous with his imaging research, which has been tremendously inspiring. And so I think, you know, this description certainly was spot on when we think about Bob. And, you know, one of the great examples of that is, you know, he says, I think the point of AI and radiomics is that it can pull together subtle features out of images that are impossible to see with the naked eye. And so there are a lot of expectations of deep learning. We probably all have our insight into deep learning and images that drive some sort of expectation that ultimately is expressed in the research that you do. And certainly things like segmentation is a major focus of deep learning applications. And for some things, very precise segmentation and measurement is critical in order to be uh, valuable for the practice of medicine. But, you know, just to, to poke the bear a little bit, I'll argue that for a lot of things and, and almost every case with uh, malignancies, I personally don't think segmentation is all that important. Um, I think that there's a lot of things right at the margin, which is where the infiltration of cancer is going on, that says don't uh, segment it right at the point where the human eye sees an abnormality starting and stopping. There may well be information that's just a little bit beyond what seems to be the margin that probably there is signal there that's important. And there are other examples. Uh, you know, I practice as a neuroradiologist, and a critical problem today is true progression versus pseudo progression. And in that case, the size definitely does not matter. Um, in fact, you hear every once in a while about people with glioblastoma that live for years. Those are the people with pseudoprogression where actually you get this blossoming of enhancement. So size is not the thing that's important to measure. You need to know what's going on with the pixels. So when you think about expectation and deep learning, then it's really driven by knowledge that suggests the possibility of discovery and it drives the efforts to do that discovery. But there also has to be insight into the biology of that data in order to produce the best results. And in fact, if you think about Bob's insight that there is going to be some subtle signal that we humans can't see, but that will predict the molecular properties of these tumors, you know, in fact, we know that it's true. There are a number of publications that have shown the ability of deep learning to extract subtle features that we practicing radiologists would have never thought possible. And I think that's a really exciting thing. Um, you know, and clearly, there's more information than just the pixels. And if you can add in non-pixel information, you probably are going to do better. That's why I think today, uh, human radiologists still are at the level of deep learning is because we can integrate information that isn't necessarily within the pixels. So after expectation, now you've got to start to believe it. And there's always, you know, setbacks in science and, and belief leads to the perseverance that's required. And another great quote is that when I experienced continuous failure in my research, Professor Gillies didn't give up on me. He kept encouraging me and accompanying me at every step. And so, you know, if you think that science is a nice linear progression, 
everybody in here, we all, we all know that that's not the way it is. And so you have to kind of have that insight to know, yeah, a setback is normal. And in fact, in some respects, setbacks are what provide more knowledge, right? If, if everything is what you expected, then you already knew it. And so when things happen that isn't what you expect, then that's where you learn because there must have been something that you didn't understand. And of course, belief without evidence is faith. So this is a little bit of a yin and the yang where you have to have belief, but you also have to recognize when to give up certain beliefs. And a crisis in deep learning is understanding if and what the basis for prediction is. And I think that deep learning has a great potential as a discovery tool, but currently it's largely relegated to human tasks like segmentation, detection, classification. And um, there's been a lot of discussion about explainability. Um, as I think about it more, I think explainability is a misnomer. We don't really understand. Uh, things like saliency maps are localization tools, but they don't help us understand what's going on. And, and personally, I, I'm not convinced that we're ever going to understand it in the sense that we will say, ah, because it is this texture that's EGFR amplified, for instance. I think that is just way beyond what our puny human brains can figure out. And certainly multidimensional, multi-parametric uh, associations that take millions of examples to extract from a deep learning algorithm probably is beyond what we humans can figure out. So that leads to the important question of when can I trust an AI prediction? And of course, we're all familiar with this quote that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And I think there's an important adaptation for deep learning that all models are wrong, but those that tell us when they might be wrong are better. So uh, there's already been some discussion of calibration and calibration and the associated concept of uncertainty is probably where deep learning needs to go next. We need to understand when a prediction is known to be reliable and you can trust it. It's just like a radiologist interpretation, right? If we say this is highly consistent with, or this is probably, or this could possibly be, or I don't know what, I've never seen anything like this before. If your predictions are highly consistent, if, when you say that I'm pretty sure this is what it is and you're right, that's much more valuable than, you know, saying I always know exactly what it is and you know being wrong sometimes and so that's an important component of deep learning um, i think also that part of knowing comes from perspective and better yet multiple perspectives and and bob's great ease in working at the interface of these multiple fields biology engineering and physics is exemplified by the many papers that he published in a single issue of biotechnology and bioengineering in 88 and he was passionate about his research, but with a marvelous sense of humor. You know, we we heard about some of his almost uh, bizarre comments that, you know, as you think about it a little bit more, it's like, oh, that's kind of a clever way of thinking about things. And I think that that's a, an important thing that we can also apply to deep learning. And I think that the breadth of perspectives and the depth of knowledge is critical. And, you know, again, another quote about the depth of knowledge of multiple fields being integrated together is just like what we need with multimodal AI. And so as I think about deep learning and Bob, you know, Bob was a consummate scientist who had a broad background, knowledge, experience, and all that informed an amazing intuition of what was important. He was a fantastic team leader who encouraged all to, to persist in their efforts, but he also guided them as needed. And I think that similarly, deep learning is going to be work best when modeled after Bob Gillies use multiple sources of data with perspective combined with an, an awareness of what can or can't be trusted. So that I'll say thank you for your attention and uh, questions are at the end, right? Uh, we'll take questions now. <laughs>